Okay, now that we have all our sensors set up, the blocks and the turnout sensors, um, the first thing to do is make sure you have a listing made of all your sensors. So what I've done here is uh, for the various AIU01s, I've put the address on here. Um, and as you recall, that was on, off, on, on, off, off on the dip switches. And then down the side, there was 14 sensors. And I labeled each uh, address as to um, what that sensor is for. Because this is going to be very important uh, once we start entering the information. Um, and uh, this is the code that I used when I put it uh, on the spreadsheet. Okay. And then you're also going to have a separate column um, that's going to give you uh, the code that sets it up in um, uh, JMRI. Okay, so at this point, I recommend you go to uh, Art Houston's uh, videos on setting up a uh, layout editor. Um, he's done a very good step-by-step, uh, -step, uh, simple to follow um, video on setting that up. I'll have that information in the in the notes section, but uh, basically it starts from Panel Pro. Um, so you open that up, and we go to uh, Panels, um, New Layout or uh, New Panel, and we go to Layout Editor. And when I click on that, it brings up uh, a screen like this, and Art takes you through. Um, setting up the uh, sensors. That's the first thing we're going to do. And he explains how um, the system automatically gives it uh, each sensor an address internally. Um, now these numbers are based on the AIU-01 uh, location and um, I don't understand how it knows uh, that uh, I guess if you look through the instructions it sets it up but if if we, you set it up with an address of 50 and then each terminal um, I guess it starts at number 784 is the first one and uh, and it goes up from there um, I believe Art uh, explains that so let's do an example here after watching that video I'll give you a few things to watch for um, now to set up a new sensor we're gonna go add I'm gonna put the sensor number in here um, that corresponds to the AIU01 uh, that's gonna so that's your hardware address and that and you see the system is NCE and the hardware address uh, for the next block that I'm putting in is going to be 791 and the username for me that is uh, represents block 470 put that in and just click OK okay and you can see that it has added that um, to our listing. So that uh, stands for NCE Sensor 791 and we gave that a username of Block 470 because that's the uh, occupancy block detector that that's set up to. Okay, and I want to do one other one, uh, the terminal, uh, sorry, the turnout. So I'm going to add that in and my turnout is on terminal 7 uh, which corresponds to 790 and that is my turnout 421 so I use a code of T421 now that corresponds to my my diagram these were these were my notes that I made when I was uh, setting up all the block sensors. So this is uh, turnout 441, turnout 421, uh, block 430, uh, block 470 represents the section in between, uh, same as 430, 
and uh, so this is the interlocking that we're going to be setting the signals up to uh, before and after uh, these two uh, crossovers. So you should have that information handy along with your uh, listing of all the sensors. So my username is T421 for that. Click OK. And you can see that's been added here, 792. So it's keeping all the sensors in a row or, you know, um, by number. Uh, that's turnout 421. And right now it's listed as unknown because this is the state. So uh, when you activate those sensors on your layout, um, the state will change on this chart. Now you can also change it manually and you can see that uh, that will affect what's on the screen. Now this this block here is block 430. I've already put that on the screen. Um, put that on the layout. So now when I click, so right now it's inactive, so it's black, but if a train were to go into that uh, block on the layout, that would go to active, and that now turns to red to show that a, a train is in that block. So that that's how it would, would work uh, when it's when it's automated. Uh, right now I can do that manually. Um, same thing. This crossover, this was set up as uh, turnout 441. I'll show you how we did that uh, in a minute. Um, and right now that uh, sensor is active, showing that uh, the tortoise is thrown. And when that tortoise goes uh, uh, moves, that sensor becomes inactive, and the switch goes back to the normal position. So let's look at, uh, now that we've got the sensor set up, uh, all we have to do is go and put the turnouts on the layout editor. So let's do... Uh, crossover 421 so I go up to the turnout name and put in 421 and that's going to be a right hand crossover so we click that up there and that is actually a you can have an occupancy sensor set up with the turnout as well um, and that looks to be 460. I don't think there's a sensor for that set up yet, but I'll try it. And that is part of the main line, so we have main line clicked here. And I hold down my shift key and left click. No, okay, there is no 420. Uh, I cannot assign turnout because there is no turnout defined for 421. Oh, okay, I forgot a step here. Uh, we have to go to the turnout page and let's add that turnout onto here. So we're going to call that 421. And the username is going to be T421. Now, if you have, if you're using uh, a switch eight or um, stationary decoders for your turnouts, you can put that hardware address in here, um, and that's going to be, and that's going to allow you to control the turnout right from the page here as well. So, okay, so we've added that. I clicked OK. You can see that's now on here. And now we can go to our panel. Let me get rid of this one. Okay, so let's try that again. This is going to be 421. And, oh, sorry. We have T421 on our on our sensor pit on our uh, turnout page there or did I just do it as 421 I think it was just 421 sorry okay and the block 460 it's a right hand crossover part of the main line and now I hold the shift key oh geez still so 421 no okay it was T421 okay T421 
Okay, there it is. So shift key and left click, and this time it worked. That's called T421. And I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. You can change the size of things by holding, by going onto the red or one of these corners, holding the right uh, click button, and then dragging it. Okay, and I'm going to move it over to there, to the anchor point. It'll turn red when you get them lined up properly. Or sorry, turn green. Oh, in this case, blue. Okay, see this one's green, this one's blue. Okay. Okay, it's a little bigger now. They're a little finicky. You can drag these around. I have them... Let's see how I can make this one bigger. bigger there and I'm going to rotate it somehow. There we go. Okay. So that's good. All I'm doing is just holding the right button and clicking on these little red squares to get them to line up properly and I have the snap on so that's moving. Okay. So right now we can turn that by clicking on the um, in middle of the turnout because we don't have a sensor associated with it. Now if we go back to the turnout page okay, and we go over to the right of the page, this is long, there's a long listing here. Okay, so we drag this over to the right and under mode we're going to one sensor which means that it's uh, the status is going to um, be fed back through a sensor and that sensor is going to be T421 okay so whenever that sensor trips it's going to change the status of that turnout so if we go back to our sensors page Okay, now, if um, if the if uh, the turnout is thrown uh, back by a panel, um, this will go from inactive to active, and you can see it's throwing the turnout here on our panel. Okay, now that's done by the sensor. That's not done by the turnout page. Okay. So now we have these two turnouts that have um, that use the sensors to feedback and tell the JMRI what position those turnouts are in. Okay. Now we can put in another block, the block in between them. According to my, let's get rid of that. According to my diagram, uh, that is block. For 70 that we set up. So in here in the block name, block for 70. And the occupancy sensor that we set up for that is also called block for 70. Um, we're doing a track segment that is main line. And so now we go down here, and there has to be a couple anchor points set up. We don't actually we don't need those two anchor points. We can ignore. Uh, we can. I'll do. I'll do it between those two anchor points. So I'm holding the shift key, right click. Sorry, left click. Drag it between the two points, and there it is. Now we can attach those. Sorry, by right clicking on that corner. Uh, come on, get in there. Uh, I went with the. There, okay. Just overlap them, and they go green. Okay, so that means that the track segments are now joined. So now if we go over to the sensors, and that was block 470, 
currently inactive, so no train is in there. Uh, train comes along, goes into that block, that becomes active, and you can see it goes red. So that's setting up the Panel Pro, and now we're ready um, to start setting up the signals. Uh, one other, a uh, couple other things I want to mention about the layout editor, which uh, Art didn't mention. Um, so for instance, say you run out of space on here and um, you want to make the uh, expand your layout further. Well, there's only so much grid space in the layout editor. You can still use, I can put more anchor points, uh, anchor point. You can still use um, the area out here. I'm trying to put an anchor point. Okay, there. Left click. You can still use the area out here, but uh, there's no grid to uh, work off of. And so you're best off to try and start, you know, over here to the far left and then work work out from there and keep your uh, use the grid small enough so that uh, you don't run out of space uh, or if you're comfortable working without the grid that's fine too um, and also if you want to make a curved section of track or make it curved on your diagram okay that's not difficult to do you just set up the anchor points in the configuration that you want to do it and when you set up track segments you can set up multiple segments associated with the same block I'm just going between the different anchor points now this is all the same block so they all they're all gonna trip together um, And they're just in a curved configuration, smaller configuration. So that's uh, that's how you do that. So that uh, pretty much ends our section on uh, getting to get signals. Uh, we first need to put the um, our layout in the layout editor and and put it on a on a diagram like this. And um, now we can start setting up the uh, other side of it to send the information from the signals to the uh, signal drivers. So that'll be in the next video.